Hello guys, it's me again, Amar, and I'm back with another video. Today's video is gonna be about RAM overclocking. Basically, by the end of this video, you guys are gonna be ready to overclock your RAM. Anyways, I'll be linking every software that I'm using in the video description below. So, before we jump into the video, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and let's do this. Alright guys, so, basically, I will link everything in the video description below. I have, uh, I'm gonna link the DRAM calculator as well the um, CPU Z software as well this little handy software which is the Typhoon Burner. Um, you're gonna download any version of these but I prefer the May 20, 2020. Alright, so the first thing we wanna do is to launch the Typhoon Burner first. Um, basically, if you double click the Typhoon and it's not working, you just right click it, run as admin, and yes, and it should run, alright? Anyways, um, <clears throat> once you run it, you just need to click here on the, um, on this read tab, and you're gonna read the SPD file for your specific RAM that you own, and basically you're gonna get everything here basically you have to look for the manufacturer die density all right 8 gb b die which is the one that i own right here anyways you're gonna um go to report go all the way down show delay in nanoseconds and then you're gonna export this as complete html report Right, and after that, um, we're just gonna close this one, close this one. We're gonna run the DRAM calculator as well. And once we have it open, okay, I'm gonna go through this pretty quick because basically everyone knows about the DRAM calculator for Ryzen. Your processor, Zen, Zen Plus, Zen 2, whatever. Memory type, the one I showed you, I'm using B Samsung B die, and you can. You can do the same thing that I did to know which memory type you're using. You can launch the CPU ID. Um, let's see. Yeah, you can launch this and go to SPD and then go to slot 2. And then you will, you will actually know the rank of your um, memory. And as well, you can see that the DRAM manufacturer is Samsung. And you got the part number. You got the XMP profile and what have you. And anyways... I'm gonna set this as for um, Zen 2 and I'm gonna import the XMP profile that we just did download from Typhoon Burner. So I'm gonna go to desktop and here it is 3600C17. And once I open it, you can see we have the values here in nanoseconds. Alright, so first thing we wanna do is, of course, we're gonna need to choose our motherboard type b450 x470 i'm using the x470 gaming pro carbon by msi so i'm going for b450 slash x470 and i'm gonna leave the bclk at default which is 100 and of course i'm using two dims okay see this is on 3200 megahertz but we don't want to stay at 3200 we're gonna go all the way to 3800 megahertz and calculate the safe and as you can see we have the main timings over here the 16 18 18 18 36 and from trc and all the way to tcke are all these sub timings all right all right so we're gonna talk about those main timings all right in this particular kit that i own it's the um, 3600CL171818-38. Basically, I did test this kit. And the thing is, this kit doesn't scale well with voltages as well. I did test it at 1.5 volt uh, at 16, 16, 16, 16, 36. It did post, but it was unstable as fuck. Like, um, where is it? Yeah, it's over here. Like... I already got like pretty good numbers over here but the thing is this one was pretty not stable whatsoever even at 1.5 volt yeah with this kit in particular the TRCDs and the TRP it's pretty 
hard to go lower than 18, especially at 3800 MHz. And as well, by increasing the voltage, you cannot lower them as well, because even at 16, 17, 17, 17, it won't be stable. Even at like 1.45 volt, 1.5 volt. I'm not sure what's going on with this kit, maybe silicon lottery or something, but yeah. To get the TRFC, TRC value, and you have to multiply it by 6 or by 8. So if we gonna get the calculator over here real quick. Um, I got my TRC 56 multiplied by 6. I'm gonna get 336, alright? If I do the same 56 multiplied by 5, I'm gonna get 280. Which is again, 5 is pretty much you're playing with the lottery, I guess. Basically, on the main timings, I cannot go anywhere any lower than this. Don't forget to follow the rule TRC, TRS plus TRP. So basically, I'm saying about this one, how to get this value, alright? You're gonna, you're gonna take TRS and TRP, you're gonna add them, and it will give you the TRC value. Basically, if we're looking here again, I'm not good with numbers, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do 36 plus 18, 34. You can add plus 2 for sake of stability, or you can use 54, but if you have any issues, you can plus 2 on it, and you're gonna get your TRC here. Yeah, so increasing the uh, TRCD, RD, the read one, and the TRP by one can improve stability for the RAM kit but personally I just try to go as low as I can I know these numbers are not so low but they are pretty decent especially for this kit anyways um, sometimes when you dial your overclocking numbers like when you dial everything up and you try to boot into Windows and your system just won't post like a black screen and that's it that can be fixed actually by increasing the proc odt numbers in the termination block like for me personally uh you can you can use the whatever the calculator spits for you but i'm staying at 48 ohms and my system has been stable since i don't know a bit long time and i'm not using like a lot of voltage i'm staying at 1.4 volt so basically on soc voltages i'm gonna stay at from 1 volt to 1.1 volt that's my safe range personally like i know some people can do run 1.15 or 1.125 but i prefer to stay at 1.1 volt on the soc for the DRAM voltages if you have a b die kit and you have a good airflow in your case because the thing with Samsung B dies memory, I heard a lot of people telling me that pushing voltages and once your RAM kit get be beyond 40C or something like that, it will cause instability. I'm not 100% sure about that, but I did play some games earlier and I did actually manage to get my RAM temperature to 43 to 45 Celsius. And I didn't have any crashes or anything. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here. But even at 43, 45, see, it didn't do anything. Like, my system was stable anyways. You can also enable gear down mode to help stabilize your RAM overclock. Alright, so you have command rate 1T and 2T. Gear down mode, when it's enabled, it will stay between... Um, you can say like halfway through 1T and 2T, like in the middle. You can say 1.5T if that makes any sense. And it does can stabilize memory overclocking, but it will have a slight penalty. Not penalty, it will increase your um, latency a little bit. But for me, I did disable gear down mode. I mean, what the heck? Yeah, it, it kind of took some time to get it stable my RAM kit but once it's stable then it will always be stable I guess and of course I set 3800 megahertz here because I know my CPU can do 1900 on F clock 
which is the infinity fiber clocks so in case your if clock cannot go 1900 you can set it up to 1866 i guess or 1800 it's a good starting point and try your luck from there if you calculate safe and calculate fast you won't see much difference only the difference is on twr which is this one and trtp and the trfc but for the trfc you can see i really lowered it it's not a very super crazy low on trfc but it's basically a good value overall the main goal here is to try to get as low as possible on the timings while maintaining stability here and anyways once you get the screenshot or take an take a picture of it you go to the bios you enter every single value you set your um, dram voltage your soc voltages correctly you set your proc odt your cat bus what have you everything and then you press f10 to save and exit and you basically boot into windows all right at that time if you didn't have any blue screen you didn't get any weird stuff you're gonna open the DRAM calculator again you're gonna click on membench all right and here on membench mode we're gonna go to mem test all right and for the task scope we're gonna go for like personally I go for 2000 if I want to really make sure my system is stable or my RAM overclock is very stable I just go for 2000 and let my PC run it overnight and then when I wake up I'll see if I get an error or not so if I don't get an error then I know like it's pretty stable like rock stable basically um, you can see over here I did the um, mem test basically and you can see seven for five minutes I got everything here validated and I got no errors and that's the important part you don't want any errors over here and as you can see every single thread is on 2000 or maybe a bit more and basically um, I'm running actually at 1.4 volt right now um, as you can see over here uh, where is it yeah the dim is running at 1.4 volt and I'm running the CPU Northbridge SOC at 1.075 uh, to 1.080. And of course, I did um, what they call it. I did the IDA cache and memory benchmark. It spits out 63.3 um, nanoseconds. Yeah, you can improve the read and the copy, but I'm pretty satisfied with this overclock. So, yeah. Basically, it will take a lot of trial and error. Quick and dirty way is like run them on safe preset and it should be stable. And if you go to calculate fast, basically the TWR and the TRTP and the TRFC values will change a little bit at least on my kit that's what this thing is doing but yeah um and yeah don't forget that on fast preset it actually disable the gear down mode so if you get in issues like if you get stability issues and you want a quick and dirty way to get rid of it enable gear down mode and if you enabled gear down mode and you still have stability issues you might want to increase your voltage but again it really depends on your memory kit all right guys so that's almost it for the ram overclocking basically it will take a lot of trial and error you're gonna have a lot of black screens maybe blue screens as well but if you're kind of confident and you actually kind of know what you're doing, then you're going to be on the safe side anyways. So yeah, don't forget to hit like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.